Even in the most basic end game scenarios, you can always find layer upon layer of complexity hidden under the surface. Now this adds a great depth to the apparently simple game we like to call chess. Take a look at this apparently straightforward end game in front of you. White has a pawn one square away from promotion with their king nearby, while black only has a rook that can easily be sacrificed in order to stop that promotion. But let me tell you, this endgame is a lot more complex than you think and I can't stress that enough. This proves once again why a strong understanding of tactical positioning can completely save your game. In this particular scenario, it's white's turn to play and they really only have one goal this turn, to avoid a black check at all costs. The white king has five available squares to move to. A7, B7, A5, B5, and right over here C5. Now, out of all these squares, literally only one of them will lead to a white victory, while the rest allow black to draw the game. So can you find the right move here? Let's analyze each of them and see which one is correct and exactly why it's correct. Starting with B7. Now if the white king moves to B7, it's an immediate disaster. Black will simply move to D7, pinning the pawn to our king, and we'll take it next move. The same applies to A7 as well. So right away, we see that the seventh rank is a complete no man's land. Now what about A5? Unfortunately, A5 is even worse because now we will not only lose that pawn, we're also gonna lose the game with rook to C6. So white needs a move to protect this C6 square. So what about C5? Seems good. It attacks the rook and pushes it away. The problem with that is we push the rook right back here to D1 and we can't stop the next move, which is rook to c1, even if we move the king back to b6. Now this doesn't work because remember, black's purpose here is not to win. Black's purpose is to not lose. So this only really leaves us with one choice, king to b5. The first correct move in a long series of suitable choices. But why is this the winning move? Because after this move, we protect that c6 square and we threaten to promote the pawn on our next move. The only thing that black can do in this position is to start giving checks and hopefully pick up that pawn somewhere along the way. We can't go back to b6 because of the threefold repetition rule. In this position, we have the exact same pattern as the previous position. So let's just try a couple options here. We can't move here to a4 or a6 because of the potential of black rook moving over here to c5 and just capturing our pawn. Same story goes for c4 and c6, because then black is just gonna go down to d1 and then to c1 the next move and once again, take our pawn. So the only way to win is to remain on that b file. And the only real move on that b file is king to b4. Now again, black's only option here is to just keep checking us and cross his fingers that he'll somehow pick up that pawn. So maybe you're thinking that we honestly can't make any progress in this situation because black is just gonna check us infinitely. But you'd be wrong because right here, black can't do that after the rook check on d3. Now we can finally come to the c file. Seeing that black's rook has no way of getting behind our pawn with rook to d1 or rook to c1, even if it looks like we can safely promote the next move, black has one sneaky little trick up their sleeve and that is rook to d4. Now. Take a moment, seriously, pause the video for like 10 seconds and see why this is a brilliant defense for black. Let me know in the comments if you found it. Now, this move is brilliant because if we promote to a queen the next move, black is simply gonna go rook to c4, sacrificing the rook, but forking the king and the queen. White is forced to take it, but unfortunately due to the king's placement, the game's gonna end in a stalemate. This is why we've got to be careful not to ruin things as we get to the end of our games. What white has to do is promote to a rook, not a queen. While this promotion might seem kind of ridiculous at first glance, we know that rook versus rook is a draw. Due to this unique placement of the kings, this position is a winning position for white. Now that we've promoted that pawn, it's pretty plain to see that rook to a8 is checkmate. Now in order to avoid that, Black occupies the A file first with rook to A4. Smart move. And now for the final winning move on white's part. Can you spot it? That's right. 
It's king to b3. Attacking the rook while also creating a checkmate threat with rook to c8. And it's impossible for black to defend both in this situation. He must give up his rook in order to survive a few more moves. I gotta admit, I had a lot of fun trying to figure this one out. I hope you guys enjoyed this tricky little puzzle too. And I hope it made you remember that oftentimes, even though it seems super simple and super straightforward, it's usually not. That's why we play chess and not checkers. So always look for possible wins, even in the most daunting scenarios. Once again, please like and subscribe if you enjoy our content and do not hesitate to comment any topics you'd like to see us cover in the comment section below. Have a great day.